What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite girl Amani Jelena and I'm back with another video for you guys. This video is going to be all about disputes and hair scams. Yes, hair scams do happen. Yes, disputes do happen. Honestly, if you guys are interested in vendors list, uh, webinar replays, how to start a business, launch a business, all that good stuff, Go ahead, check the description box, check out some of the replays that I have, see if those interest you. Before we start, if you guys are interested in launching a business, starting a business, launching a hair company with no money down and things like that, or minimal down, all that good stuff, definitely go ahead and send me an email at shopalore96 at gmail.com. I almost forgot. But yesterday, my Facebook group, The Bag, hit 1,000 members. So I definitely want to say thank you guys for supporting. Now, disputes and scams are definitely different and they vary in different ways, but they're similar because it's dealing with your money, okay? And when owning a business, that's very important. Your funds, your money, all that stuff is important. You have a business to ultimately profit in the end. So definitely utilize this information because I'm sorry to say, but a scam, if a scam or dispute has not occurred or has not affected you in any way, as your business grows and things like that, it's going to be people who unfortunately try to get over on you. So definitely utilize this information. And definitely go ahead and share this video because this could ultimately help someone. When you're dealing with scams or disputes, you're typically going through a website processor basically. And some very popular website processors are PayPal, Stripe, and Braintree. Those are pretty popular and also the Cash App and Square is super popular as well. I've had my fair share with all of them. Going through disputes and scams, cases, and things like that, it's not fun at all. For one, because customers or anyone who's opening up these scams on you, they can open up scams from months ago. So you can be living your best life right now and get a scam from a transaction from four months ago. Unfortunately, that's how it goes. So definitely make sure you're protecting yourself. So in this video, I'm definitely going to give you guys some tips as far as like protecting yourself, protecting yourself from fraudulent charges, fraudulent chargebacks, disputes, all that good stuff. So like I said, you need to have a payment processor that you're going off of. And it's either going to be Stripe, PayPal, Braintree, Square. It's so many different ones. So definitely do your research to see which one fits you and your brand better. Now, whatever payment processor you're going through or if you have multiple of them, definitely make sure you're looking at their policies. Definitely see what they allow and what they don't allow. See what they notify you for and what they don't notify you for. This will definitely help you get an understanding at why certain things can occur and will occur. If you have an active website and all that good stuff, definitely make sure when you're sending out orders and all that good stuff, make sure you don't have any address changes. Put that in your policies. For instance, if a customer places an order and they put the wrong address in there, and then they email me and say like, hey, I put the wrong address in, could you send it out to such and such? The answer is going to be no. I've learned my lesson with that recently, but the answer is going to be no. Just because some of these payment processors don't necessarily have seller protection or buyer protection or whatever. A, a way you can take caution as far as someone opening up a dispute on you is no address changes and put that in your policy because that's very important. Another way you can also prevent scams and disputes and chargebacks and all that good stuff is having a policy within your company that your billing and shipping address must match. Normally, if your billing and ship, if, if a customer's billing or shipping address matches, there's nothing fraudulent going on. But sometimes when customers place orders and their card number is registered in Atlanta and they're making a purchase from California, something's typically wrong. So if something like that, something like that happens, just go ahead and refund it and report it as fraudulent or report it to whatever payment processor you're dealing with. Another tip would be whatever payment processor that you are going through, typically the payment processors, at least the popular ones, they have um, mobile app. So if you log into your account on your mobile app phone, you can set up notifications and things like that when you want them to notify you or how you want them to notify you. Definitely make sure you're doing so. Because, for instance, if, if a customer places an order, the example that I'm going to use is based off the payment processor Stripe. 
I know if a customer is about to place an order and they put their card information into the payment processor and it bounces, Stripe is going to notify me that that payment failed. Now, with my company, I have a one-time fail because I do understand that you can type your card number in wrong. Anything beyond two fails, I'm automatically going to red flag it. And if that payment happens to go through, I'm gonna refund it and that order is going to be canceled on spot. Make sure you have policies like this put into your business because protecting your baby and your business and all that good stuff is the most important thing. Last but not least, the next tip that I'm going to give you guys is to always use tracking when you're sending out your packages. And if your packages are of larger quantities definitely require signature confirmation. So for instance, everyone knows I own Allure 96. With Allure 96, anything over $100 automatically gets signature confirmation. Which means when I'm shipping out packages, I automatically set it up so that the mail carrier knocks on the door, requests the signature, and then the package is released to the customer just due to the fact if any fraudulent charges or anything like that pops into place i can always have that proof that like hey this person signed for that this went to this correct address i hope this video definitely helped you guys always go with your gut feeling because <laughs> scams happen chargebacks happen all that stuff it's not fair to the business owner when scams and disputes especially when the dispute was out of your hand when all of that stuff happens, it's not fair to you, fair to the business owner, nor is it fair to the person who got their identity stolen or got their credit card maxed out. Things like that is not fair. So definitely peel your eyes open, always take precaution, and all that good stuff. But if you guys do need a little bit help with your business and all that good stuff, definitely schedule a coaching call with myself or check out some of the goodies I have in the description box for you guys. But I love you. Don't forget to subscribe and also thumbs up. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.